Hello and welcome. Thank you for visiting and my most recent subscribers. It's good to have you here. Today I bring you the Colouring Memories tag, originally made by Erica from M Colours. Thank you for creating this tag. I was tagged by Liz at home. Thank you for thinking of me. I shall be working in Rita Berman's Asian, minor Risa de Asian, while I answer the questions. Let's have a look. So I've been working on this page. This is a colour along by Dreaming Colour. So I've already laid down quite a bit of the colour. It's lots of ink tense pencils. I shall be activating these with my Acra brush, just a standard one. Question one. Did you have a favourite colouring book or books as a child? I did have magic painting books that I adored when I was about four years old. Those were the ones where the image appeared from a totally blank page. It was beyond amazing. Many years later, the only colouring book I owned featured butterflies, birds and botanicals. I may have had some others, but I don't remember those. Sadly, I do not have it in my belongings, nor do I remember colouring in it with any of my family. I did not have any of the cartoon colouring books which I would have loved, especially the sword in the stone that Erica shared in her tag. It's one of my favourite old animations. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to activate this fella as quickly as I can. It's difficult for me to answer questions at the same time as concentrating on this because it's ink tense, it dries permanent. So I'll just do a little bit. And then I'll get to the next question. It's beautiful when they're activated. The colours are very vibrant. It's been a fun colour along. But yeah, I recommend this one if you want to have a go and you haven't done this page. Question number two. What was your go-to art supply as a child? Most used art supply would have been what little remains of my beloved pencil case from school around age 11. I will insert a picture of my beloved Tuffy. Preschool it would have been poster paint. I always asked mum for the paint. When that wasn't possible I used regular chalks. I was lucky to have an easel chalkboard where the poster paints were positioned in cup holders on the other side. I'll insert a picture to show a similar product. When I was a bit older, felt tip pens were normally given as a present and Crayola crayons were at pre or infant school, but I did not reach for them at home. However, I did find the first time I wrote my name before starting school and it looks like it was with crayon. Let's 
do a little bit more of this. Oh gosh, that's a very different colour, isn't it? So these are not colours picked by me. These are all colours picked by Dream in Colour. Try not to go dark to light. I need to go light to dark, don't I? So, <sighs> so uh, continue on from question two. At school, I did enjoy charcoal and chalk pastels around age eight. Um, they're much nicer than the sticks we get these days. They were thin, long and truly soft, blended effortlessly. I love them for seascapes. Mr B also remembers having them at school. Coloured pencils probably came from WH Smiths, a news agents here in the UK. They were mostly used in school exercise books from age 11, rather than hobby colouring. I dabbled with oil pastels in my teen years, and I will insert a picture here. This ear pick picture shown is part of a portrait I sent into the Take Heart TV show, and it was placed in the gallery. I have not used the oil pastel since, but you can see them in my YouTube tour video. The link is in the description. Question three. Did you colour or draw more as a child? I'd say a little of both, probably sketching more as I did not have many colouring books. Around age 10, I had these cute nature books as inspiration. And I would look at them and sometimes try and sketch So cute. Yeah, sometimes we'd try and sketch some of these. I don't really have the colouring books. And the froggy one. So these are all by David Stephen and Marjorie Blamey. A nature story. Which is so cute. I guess this is why I like nature so much. <laughs> yeah. So question three continued. I would also use dipping ink as I grew up. In my teens, mum gave me one of her French books from school and it had calligraphy exercises in it. So I became better at writing with a fountain pen and I started doodling strange or funny characters. I'll insert some that I managed to find. I had painting by number and craft kits. When I was older, if I sketched, it was usually with graphite pencil. I'll insert another picture here. So I'm trying very hard to blend these colours. I can always go back in again. I may go back in again. Yes. Probably need a little bit more pencil put down on it. Question four. Do you have a favourite colouring memory as an adult or a child? 
several. Going to the new forest as a family and we took paper and graphite pencils, just hanging out in the forest, sketching and having a picnic with wild ponies nearby. That was always nice. Then there was colouring and making Christmas cards with my mum around age eight. I loved the rich colours of the loose glitter she had in her collection. And then when I was 16, I had this old watercolour paint pan set. Let me guess. And it's this one. Excuse that I don't know what that was that I put in there, but these, the watercolours. So I took this on holiday. It was our last main family holiday. And I sat on the balcony and tried hopelessly to watercolour the Swiss mountains. And all I knew was the wet on dry process. And it wasn't very successful. <laughs> but it was a lovely memory. I remember being excited as a youngster, having my room redecorated and my dad put up a massive cork board so I could pin up my drawings. In my teens, I covered half of it with a sketch of a unicorn. It was rather large. Let's <laughs> do a little bit more. <laughs> Let's see if we can try. It's not going swimmingly tonight late at night again, I'm trying to do this while it's quiet. So we live by a busy main path, so it's not always quiet. Okay, so question five. What was your first adult colouring book? Well, most people who started colouring when it was trending probably dived into Johanna Basford or Millie Marotta. But I went looking for Beatrix Potter, which Mr B selected from my wish list for my birthday in 2021. I chat more about this in another question later on. Here's Beatrix Potter, and I'll just show you this one for now. It's a few pages, just a few scrolls. Oh. Foxy hedgehogs. <laughs> And there he is, Benjamin Bunny. So I've done a little bit of activating, but now I'm going to go in with my white pen. So many white pens, which one to use? <laughs> Depends on the night, doesn't it, or the day? Which one's going to behave? Which one should we try? Try this one first. Uh, this is from the Angelic set, which we Uniball Signo. Yeah, white pens. Sometimes they behave so well, don't they? And other times like, no, I'm not playing today. That one looks quite opaque. Might have to go back over. Question six. What was your first adult colouring supply? Ah. Yes, so I borrowed from Mr. B these pencils. He had them as a student. Um, he loaned me artist loft pencils. 
and oh, the, num the colours, no numbers. These came from Amazon, I think. Oh no, Hobby Craft, Fading Limited. Okay, so 36 pencils, that's all the colours I had. Can you see? Sorry about the glare. But I soon realised 36 colours weren't enough and I needed more. So I spotted the original Castle Arts pencils were on sale. And I tried those for a bit and still craving more nature colours, I upgraded to the full set of Polychromos pencils and they have lasted well. I'm going to try this one, the Thule Art, it's an acrylic paint pen. always the best at drawing. It's not straight lines but just a long line. Let it go. See it's turning out much more opaque than the previous one. Question seven. How did you get into adult colouring? In 2020, I was watching Bob Ross for the first time and I was transfixed. He soothed during a very anxious time. Many months later, I was watching the Beatrix Potter film. I have always loved her botanical images, so I searched for Beatrix Potter on Amazon and was surprised to see a colouring book. So I put it on my wish list and then that's when Mr. B gave it to me for my birthday. I did not know about ColorTube despite using YouTube. And so down the rabbit hole I went as I needed a more sedate hobby. Question 8. Who was your first YouTube colourist? Having bought my second book, Secret Garden, Amazon kept recommending the romantic country colouring books. So I turned to YouTube and looked it up. The first YouTube colourist I watched was... DK Design. Dominica's colourings in Romantic Country got me really interested in other kinds of adult colouring books, scenery, landscapes, that kind of thing. Two years later, I am currently going back to try more of their colouring ones. And this Romantic Country is what I've been working on in August. It's not one that I saw two years ago, but it's fitting for now. Other colour tubers were Julie's passion for pencils. I am currently working on one of her colour alongs as well, as I was always blown away by her use of so few colours and the blender pencil. Another one I'm finally getting around to was Yvonne Doring with her Enchanted Forest River page. That kept popping up on my YouTube feed, so 
it's been good great fun in fact to finally start after two years <laughs> and colour along with the bond it's been brilliant Sometimes white work can be really soothing for just being mindful. Zoning completely down into what you're doing. <laughs> Question nine. What is the first page you remember being really proud of? Well, I tend to measure my experience as to whether I enjoyed a page rather than feeling proud. It's taken me a long time to tackle backgrounds and I would get disheartened that the pencils weren't doing what I needed them to do. But I suppose the first full page was in Mythomorphia by Kirby Rosanz. And it was the first time I used metallic paint and the first time I did a background and that was with, I think it was Neo Colour Twos. I did have a bit of a problem with the paper and, and understanding that less is more when it comes to water. But to finish the whole page was quite rare for me back then. I finished the Malayan back in August 2021 and at this point I started to embrace multimedia. Your eyes haven't deceived you, I have turned the page 90 degrees see if it would help. Lots and lots of bubbles to draw. Right, question 10. What made you think, yes, I am now absolutely an adult colourist? Well, I'm still learning how to mix colours so do not consider myself a colourist. This is my hobby and, and I am just enjoying the process. I consider myself an enthusiast. However, I am a wannabe animation background colourist during the heydays. My dream job would have been to work for Warner Brothers on Looney Tunes during the 1960s with the insanely talented artist Maurice Noble and the team. I wasn't even born then. I loved his style which was inspired by various classical artists like Salvador Dali, Rockwell Kent and David Hockney. You can see a short YouTube video of his Looney Tunes animation work. The link is in the description if you're interested. But this is totally my thing. Let's just do a little bit more activating, see what we can do. This one, Let's see what the colours, I think this is a different colour combo. Like I say, I didn't pick these colours, I just followed along. Just want to see how it turns out when you follow somebody else. It's a risk. I must admit, I've been working on another page today and I didn't look through until the end. And I just followed along and I'm thinking, ooh, should I have done that? So you have to wait and see how that one turns out. I don't always like the images, how they turn out.
this page is going to be part of Erica's other tag this month in August. She's got the Asian tag. So I thought it was fitting. She's splaying there. Yeah. Try not to use too much water. 